Yeah, you need to use the court exhibit. Uh, I don't have them because they, I don't know where they're at. I believe they're being, last I saw they were on the witness stand. Let me check. Can, can I get a copy of them so I know what you're talking about? Um, sure. I believe these are them. Ten B, Your Honor, is Exhibit Ten Fifty Three. It is a transcript of a recording of a conversation of expert testimony under People versus Sanchez. It has not been previously admitted, nor authenticated. No, 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 no I'll say counsel's breath on that. We were we we weren't going to use that, so we're. I'll just withdraw that okay. at this at this moment. It could come out later, but I withdraw it now. Okay. And any testimony regarding it as the basis of an opinion. As okay. I said, we're not introducing it, so we withdraw it. Okay. 10C is Exhibit 1054. These are a set of PayPal records. Uh, the witness that was here um, yesterday or Monday did not testify to these, did not lay the foundation for these. Uh, therefore, it would be inadmissible hearsay upon which an expert could uh, opine to. Or Unless it's readily apparent from the document, that declaration does not. Substantial compliance. There's, there's nothing on the record indicating that's in California. I, I, I understand. And substantial compliance is not a statutory exception. Okay. I understand. Okay. Okay. All right, the uh, record reflects we are back in session. Parties and counsel are present. All members of our jury and all people present are witnesses tonight on the witness stand. And Mr. Malini, you may continue your examination. Thank you. So before lunch, um, we were going to go to uh, subsection uh, 10. And before we do that, um, are you familiar with the term internet protocol? Yes. And short for IP. Correct. And there's something known as an IP address, is that correct? That's right. Um, first of all, do you have any uh, expertise or um, experience in dealing with IPs? Yes, I do. And what is that? Um, I, uh, IPs come up routinely in my work. Um, and uh, I have training throughout my uh, going back to before college, during college, and afterward in what they have to do with networks, how data is exchanged across the internet. And what is an IP address? Um, an IP address is a sequence of numbers. It uniquely identifies a device that is communicating via the internet. So that could be a computer, um, a mobile phone, a tablet, it could be a number of different devices. Um, and who doles out these IP addresses? Do I, if I wanted to get an IP address, could I go get one and call someone up and say, hey, I want an IP address? So typically, you would use your computer or your phone or whatever you're using to access the internet. Um, you're going to connect that to a service provider, an internet service provider, that connects you to the internet. So an example would be Comcast, Sprint, AT&T, Verizon. All of these companies connect you to the internet. They will assign your device um, an IP address. And how do, how do those internet service providers get their, uh, I guess, in the IPs to dole out? Those companies request and register blocks of these numbers um, from, a, uh, from a, a group, a company called uh, ARIN. There's a bunch of abbreviations here. This one is A-R-I-N, the American Registry of Internet Numbers. Is the American uh, Registry of Internet Numbers given a block themselves from some organization? Or do they just come up with these themselves? They coordinate with a 
global um, authority that um, keeps track of the different different blocks and uh, helps assign them to regions of the world. There are six regions of the world. North America is one of these. Um, and this uh, global group called the IANA, I apologize, I don't remember exactly what that stands for, uh, as I sit here, but that is a global authority that helps make sure that these numbers are divided up and that two groups are not using the same numbers, etc. And is the function of dividing up the numbers once they've been assigned to North America, that agency is the A-R-I-N? The American Registry for Internet Numbers. Okay. That's the North American Registry. Now, when they dole out the numbers to the internet service providers who then dole it out to us, um, is that, do services provide that information? of what those numbers are and maybe who has them or where they are, locations Un they're assigned to? Un understood. Um, there, there are services that rely upon the information maintained by Aaron uh, that uh, show various information about the IP addresses. Um, now, is, are those services available to uh, experts such as yourself where you can go to a service and get that information or basic information about a particular number. Yes, those are available. Okay. And where would one find those? Uh, are those things that are services that you can go to as a uh, on the internet, for example, and and get basic information? They're they're publicly available sources. Okay. Yes. Do experts in this field, in your field, computer forensics, routinely rely on those? Um, uh, I guess those services to look up information about IPs. Yes, we do routinely. Okay, uh, and you've been doing that for how long? Uh, re relying on those services to get basic information about IP addresses. I've I've relied upon these services my entire career as a forensic analyst. Um, I've relied upon those services before I was forensic uh, forensic analyst to look up information as when I was doing, for example, IT work as well. Okay. Now, there was testimony uh, about Dan Kavanaugh's PayPal records, I believe yesterday. Um, and the testimony was that PayPal, when they provide an activity log, they capture, is the term that was used, an IP address. Do you know what that term means? Yes, I do. Which okay. action calls for speculation, lacks foundation as to PayPal's practices. Ooh. Um, typically when a company, uh, capture is a commonly used term that I've seen for companies such as PayPal. Um, the term typically means that um, there is, so a user is communicating with PayPal via their device, their phone, or their computer, whatever it is that they're using, and in, in order for the communication between the device and PayPal to exist, the both ends of this have to know the IP address of the other one. It's, it's like me, me saying, hello, Mr. Mr. John, I'm talking to you. For computers, they use an IP address for that. They see this number, I'm talking to you. So a company like PayPal, when they receive this hello number, they will often keep this number, and that's what PayPal would refer to as capturing the number for their records, typically for security. And does capturing also mean at the time that it's captured, there's a time reference as well? When it's captured? Almost universally, when you capture an IP address, you capture the time of it as well. Okay. And does the IP address serve a location function as well? Um, IP addresses are associated uh, with physical locations and regions, yes. Okay. So, um, when uh, PayPal captures an IP address for a particular time, you can go to one of the services if you have the number, and you can look it up to see what region or what location um, that IP address was captured at, at that time. Is that correct? Um, I would I would restate that uh, a, a bit. 
Um, you can use one of these services to see um, what, for that particular IP address, what information, including what location information, is recorded for that IP address. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to Exhibit 1021. It's I'm not in your Jack packet. I'm going to Jack Foundation at this time for further testimony on this topic. This is previously identified by Ms. Kane. Let, let me ask you a couple of other clarifying questions. So, when you say that the IP address is associated with a physical location, tell me what you mean by that. What I mean is that the services maintain a database of IP addresses and locations, <coughs> and they, when, when you look this up, the service will relate to you in their database what location is associated with that address. Okay, so I go out and buy a laptop computer, bring it home, I have internet, Wi-Fi, I get it all set up, I start sending emails, I start doing internet searches, go to internet sites. Each time I do that, it's putting out my IP address, correct? That's right. Okay. So, and I'm doing that, let's say, at home in San Bernardino. Okay. Okay. So, the address associated with that IP address is going to be San Bernardino? It, it, will, it will likely be San Bernardino. It may be a region, um, the San Bernardino area. Um, in some cases, it may be uh, a region nearby. You may get an adjacent city. Um, but uh, you'll General get General geographic region. location. Correct. Okay. So now I go on vacation. I go to New York. I take my laptop computer with me to New York. Now I'm in a hotel in New York. I hook up to their internet. And once again, I'm sending emails on the internet sites. My IP address is being registered. You, it is being registered. It, it's that activity is showing an IP address. Yes. Okay. What, what if any location is being shown? In that situation, when you go to New York, you will be communicating via a new method to the internet. So you'll be going probably through the Wi-Fi of the hotel. As opposed to when you were home, you're communicating, say, via Time Warner or right. something like that. The hotel... Uh, the company, the, the hotel is getting the internet from a company right. like Buck Verizon or Time Warner, right. which assigns an IP address to the hotel, which you are then utilizing for your communications. So in that instance, the region that you would expect to see would be New York. So even though I'm using the same laptop, if I'm in a different location, using a different internet provider, I have a different IP address. That's right. Okay. Um, what was the next exhibit number? It's, it's 1021, which is the one we've already used with Ms. Kane, who testified yesterday from PayPal. Those are the PayPal records? Yes. All right, the objections overruled as to, you want to ask some questions about those PayPal records you can. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put up uh, Exhibit 1021. Which section? The activity log. This will be the activity log, which uh, the witness from PayPal had testified to. Do you, are you familiar with these records? Um, yes, I've received these records. Okay. So I'm going to go to um, uh, January of 2010. Now, on these records, does, is there a place where PayPal identifies the IP address uh, for their records? Yes, column B is the IP address. Uh, captured for at that time. Okay, so if we go to uh, January 14th, 2010, uh, 
in, we have a, a time of uh, 1.30, is that correct? Uh, January 14th, okay, there we go. Uh, 1, 1.30, I'm sorry? Um, yes, uh, sorry, uh, 13.30, do I have that right? No, I'm sorry, that's 0, 13.30, sorry. Correct, so 12, 12.13 a.m. Oh, 12.13 a.m., okay. Um, now next to it, is, is that an IP address? Yes. Okay. 66.91.7.2. Now based on your training and experience, were you able to uh, find out what a region is associated with that IP address? Yes, Objection, so lacks foundation as to 2010. Sustained lay foundation as to Do you, whether or not those remain constant. So, we have these records, and they're dated 2010, but we're actually in 2019. Correct. And internet uh, protocol addresses change, is that correct? Um, I mean, IP addresses change? IP addresses, do they change? I mean, e each time, if, if you use a new connection to the internet, you'll be assigned a new IP address? I, my bad question, let me, let me ask again. Over time, um, like for example, is this IP address that's captured in 2010, if we looked it up today, is it possible to tell whether it's the same or it's changed? As in the location? Yes. Information? Correct. Um, there, uh, from, from my uh, research uh, into this and my experience, I'm not aware of any database that maintains the historical records or will positively uh, tell you what the, the history was at a time. Okay. I so, renew my objection. I have no foundation. Yeah. Okay. He's not, we're not done. <laughs> so, how would one know whether this or is there a way to tell, as an expert in your, with your training and experience, whether if we're looking up an address today, uh, whether it was the same in 2010, or in terms of where the, what the region is? We, we rely on consistency among the data. So what would you do to verify that there has been not a change since, let's say, 2010? What I would do to, um, for verification of this information is I would look at... Um, the context in which it is coming. Um, in this particular case, I did work to verify uh, this information, uh, including the fact of understanding that it is a 2010 uh, information, and the data that's available to me is 2019, by looking at the context of the rest of the history in here. There's, this is an isolated single day of this IP address, but there are many, 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 many other IP addresses in this list. So what I did was I looked for consistency among these to uh, show verification, so validation that the location that I found uh, uh, for this particular time uh, is a consistent location uh, when compared with the other IP addresses uh, over time. If you see that the location is generally the same, generally where you would expect that location to be given the context of the scenario, it adds to the validation that the information probably is correct. I'm going to object as non-responsive as to change over time. Move to strike his answer. Overall, that answer agrees. So, if, and do, if an expert is looking at historical IP addresses, <coughs> In order to say that a region is associated with that IP address, uh, let's say back in 2010, is there something that you can do to, um, well, let me ask you this. If there's a change in location, is that something that you could look up? Would that identify itself if there was a change in location? Let's say this IP address of 66.91.7.2 uh, changed from 10 years ago and it's different today would you be able to uh, note, note any changes? Objection. Calls for speculation lacks foundation based on his previous answer to oh, no. the historical database. Oh, no. So, 
what what I would be looking for, and I, I, I believe this is the answer to your question, uh, is, responsive then. is if I did see a difference in location, a difference uh, between, say, where the region of this, this, one, this one was, where the next one was, where if, if I was seeing, for example, one said Las Vegas, the next one said New York, the next one said Phoenix, if, if there was not consistency, then I would absolutely doubt the credibility uh, of the data. Perhaps uh, wonder why that is a possibility, as you said, of, that there was a change uh, in the Internet Service Provider's data, uh, but with the consistency, if I do see a consistency, that tells me that the data most likely is correct. And did you see a consistency with these records? Yes. Okay. And were you able to then make a, in your expert opinion, an opinion as to what this, uh, what, what region was asso is associated with this uh, IP address of 66.91.7.2? I object. Lack of foundation. Mm, sustained at this point. Let me ask you a couple of additional questions. The PayPal records of Mr. Kavanaugh that you had, uh, what was the total range of dates or times, beginning to end? Um, from recollection, I believe the list is 2010 that I, that I saw and I reviewed. So the, I believe it was the beginning of 2010 to the end of 2010. Okay. So you were able to, as you said, as you point out, there are a number of IP addresses that are the same. A lot of them are the same, right? Um, I, actually, I would say that's just in the context of this one screenshot right here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there are many, many, many pages, and if we scroll through it, you'll see that there are actually many diff completely unique numbers. Okay. So, if you're able to associate in 2010, okay, I'm seeing a lot of similar numbers, similar regions, so I'm satisfied that all of these are showing the consistent locations in 2010. And you're looking, and you're now you're in 2019. And you're saying, okay, in 2019, did you, did you do any correlation with, okay, 2019, where are these internet IP addresses, what locations are they associated with, and is it the same as it was in 2010 in these records? Did you do that? So... That, the, the, fir the, the, the first thing that we were referring to, there is no record of which I'm aware that one can check to see what was the information absolutely in, in 2010. What I did do was I looked for a consistency of these locations throughout all of the, the different IP addresses uh, to look to see if that would validate that the location is consistent among that and also give that the context of the locations that we know are uh, individuals existed in this matter. Okay. So right now, today, if you have an IP address, you would there's databases, research you can do that would tell you what geographic location is associated with that IP address, correct? That's right. Okay. So you could take these IP addresses and right now see as of today what geographic location is associated with those addresses, correct? That's right. Okay. And then you could look at are these records showing the location or are you now just saying, well, this is the location in that it is right now and they're all consistent. So my opinion is 
the location is the same in 2010 as it was, as it is now? Um, it, it, it is that I'm looking up the location for now. That data is not maintained by PayPal. What I'm doing is I'm looking for a consistency among the location now and using my knowledge as, as an expert to know that if there was a change between 2010 and 2019, that it would be highly, highly unusual, almost an impossibility, that that region would change for the entire group of IP addresses. So if perhaps there was a change for one IP address, then perhaps I could see that the information was different from 2010 and 2019. But if I see that they're all matching, that, matching the same location today, it's very unlikely that uh, there would have been a change for all of those, if that makes sense. Still trying to understand how you're. You have an IP address. Right now, you can look up and say, okay, right now I know that IP address is associated with a particular region. Correct. Okay. And then you look at these records and say, okay, we have that IP address maybe several times. Right. Okay. And you have a different IP address. And right now you can look up and say, all right, right now I know what geographic location that different IP address is for. That's right. And maybe that different one is in several times. Yes. I'm not understanding the, the consistency that you say you're looking at. Could, it, could I give an example? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, let's say, for example, let's go back to... Your Honor, uh, uh, may we approach? <coughs> sure. Don't you want to approach? Sure. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'm Jeff Hall. I'm the Yes. Okay. Um, I, I like to give an example, and, and also, uh, if, if I could, I'd like to preface the example. Um, I should have said in the beginning of this, from my experience in this, um, I have seen that these locations do not frequently change from my lookups of my own personal IP addresses over history. The locations have generally seemed to be consistent. Okay. Um, now, that, that being said, uh, to give an example, um, let's say that I was talking about um, an uncle of mine who lives in Las Vegas. And I know, uh, to use these years, uh, I know that in, in 2010, he lived and worked in Las Vegas. So I would generally expect information associated with him to be Las Vegas. If I'm looking at IP addresses from my uncle's computer today, um, and uh, and, I'm, and I look up those IP addresses using these services, and I see that they are all resolving today to Las Vegas, that's the type of consistency that I'm talking about. That among all of these lookups today for the IP addresses back in 2010, they're all showing a consistency among themselves and with a region that I would expect, given the knowledge that my uncle lived in Las Vegas. Um, so in this case, you don't have the, the example you gave is today you were seeing uh, an IP address of your uncle's. You knew that he lived in Las Vegas 
in 2010, and if it's the same IP address, well, then it's the public still in Las Vegas. But with these, you don't have any 2019 data, right? Well, what I'm saying is that I would look up today in 2019 what the regions associated are, and if they are reporting Las Vegas all throughout them, then that's consistent with among themselves and my knowledge of 2010, okay. which leads credence to the 2010 data. Forensic work for how many years? Uh, since the end of 2008. And a lot of that work involves looking at IP addresses. A significant portion, yes. And your experience in associating IP addresses with uh, various geographic regions. Have you noticed any changes where uh, a particular IP address or a general IP address uh, has a different geographic location associated with it over time? My experience when I have looked at IP addresses over different times is they've generally been consistent. as to foundation is overruled. I think there's sufficient foundation, I think, uh, for the rest of the issues go to the weight to be given in the opinion. Thank you. So going, uh, drawing our attention to Exhibit 1021 and going to January 14th, we were talking about, these are Dan Kavanaugh's PayPal records. We showed January 14th, and you uh, indicated that 12.13 a.m. Uh, it looks like 66.91.7.2. Uh, is that IP address associated with a region? Uh, yes. And what is, is that? Uh, that IP address is associated with Hawaii. Okay. And we have, it looks like there's three entries all on January 14th, the last being at 12.31? 12.31 a.m. Okay. With the same IP address, so that also would be Hawaii, correct? That's right. All right. Um, what about the next entry, which it looks like there's a 12-day gap? That's right. January 26th is the next entry. So January 26th, the uh, time is 4.47? 4.47 a.m. Okay, and now we have a new address, 70.95.69.75. What area is that IP address associated with? The San Diego area. Okay, so we're looking at January 26th, and there are several connections on 26th uh, from 4, the time that you started, 4.47 to 5.01? That's right. Okay. And that's the same day, same IP address, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. And let's go, uh, if we can scroll up. Um, we're, we're looking at the same IP address, is that correct? That's right. This and, uh, all the <laughs> same IP. And it had the, the, the dates are changing, correct? We're going from, we started at January 26th, and now we're at February uh, 18th? Yes. I'm oh, sorry, February 17th. Oh. Yes, February 17th is the last entry for this IP address. Okay. And then a new IP address starts in, uh, on February 18th, is that correct? Uh, February 17th, actually. I'm sorry, February 17th. And is that a uh, 208.54.4.52? Yes, it is. Did you check the geographic region of that? Uh, yes, I did. And what geographic region is that associated with? Um, I believe, that, may I check my exhibit? Sure. Uh, 
the 208.54 is, uh, let's see here. Okay, 208.54. Um, that one is, that, that region is associated with Southern California in general. That is a T-Mobile address, so that is a mobile uh, device, and often those uh, regions are not as specific as some of the other ones. Okay, so Southern California is the way uh, that IP address is registered? Correct. Okay. Well, To, to be specific, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing cities in Southern California. Okay. And if we keep going up past February 18th, there's another change. Uh, it looks like zero, 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 zero. Do you know what that means? Um, that, uh, that has to be something PayPal internal. Um, that's not a valid IP address. Um, okay. So I'm not sure what PayPal means by that. Okay, and then uh, we have the next series of numbers uh, going uh, 70.166.81.153. Yes. And were you able to determine what uh, area that IP address is associated with? Yes, that is the San Diego area. Okay. And if we keep going up, There a, a a change on February twenty second two zero eight point five four point four point five five. Yes, there is. And what area is that associated with? Sorry, this is February twenty second. Okay. Uh, that is uh, also T-Mobile associated in general with Southern California. Specifically, I'm seeing Garden Grove, Cup Cupertino, California, Orange, California. But as I stated earlier, for mobile records, it's usually not as specific for my experience. Would it be safe to say then, if we kept going up, that there would be no change in the general either Southern California or San Diego geographic area until we got to um, April 19, 2010. Um, I believe April 17, 2010. Okay. And if we can... So if we go to April 17th, uh, do we see a change there? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, uh, 75.13.101.111? And it, what geographic region is that associated with? Um, the There are different services that I looked up for this one. There, Two of them are not nearly as specific. They simply say United States of America. Uh, one service reports that is Redmond, Washington. Okay. Now, when you look up and when you look, when you take a number and you're looking at one of these services as part of your uh, for, computer forensic work, do you try and use multiple services to verify or? make sure that you're getting it the right geographic region? Yes, I'm looking for consistency among different services. Okay. And then uh, without, and, and then are the records that you went through, went through um, March of 2011, correct? Um, oh, let me see. Oh yes, that, that's correct, yes. Now, except for small periods, would it, would, you, would it be safe to say that over 90% of the rest of the geographic regions associated with Dan Kavanaugh's PayPal records are either San Diego area or Southern California area? 
Absolutely. The vast majority of many different IP addresses is the Southern California or specifically San Diego area. Did you see any geographic region associated with Hawaii after that first January uh, 14th uh, date? No, I did not. I'm going to shift focus a little bit at this point and talk to you about um, Joseph's computers. So far we've talked about mainly the devices that were in the, what you described in the house. And you described one as an e-machine and one as a uh, uh, HP media center, correct? That's right. Okay. The did you notice something about the, the uh, usage of those machines, or the e-machine in particular, where the uh, usage changed, meaning how often it was being used? Yes, I definitely did notice and that. And can you explain? Sure. Um, so what I noticed is that sometime in mid-2009, maybe even a little bit later on in the year of 2009, um, there is a drop-off of activity on the e-machine. So before that period of time, before the middle of 2009, uh, Joseph is very heavily using the computer for his email, uh, for documents related to the fountain business, for documents related to the financials. Um, it's very, very clear to me that this is, uh, out of the devices that I see, the primary machine that Joseph is using for his work, for his business. Mid to late 2009, these records start to dry up. We we don't see uh, e uh, we don't see email. We see very few documents. We very we see very few uh, items indicating the work that he's doing at that time. Did you, through your uh, examination of all the devices, were you able to determine whether or not Joseph had another device that is unaccounted for? Um, I was able to determine that there was another device uh, on, in the McStay home that is not accounted for. Okay. And if we can turn to uh, section five of, of the exhibits, and um, I'll go to uh, exhibit 5D and then B, uh, if, if, unless you have another uh, one you want to start with. Uh, let's see. Did... What was the first one that you said? 5? 5D and then 5B. Oh, yes, that's fine. Okay, so 5D has, would have a number on the back? 1039. Okay, so exhibit 1039? Yes. Okay, so if we could uh, put up 5D. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And what, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is a photograph that was provided with the, uh, with the forensic data um, of a laptop uh, used by Summer uh, in the house. This is a Dell Inspiron laptop. Okay. And this is one that uh, uh, Detective uh, Schrader had uh, did a report on, is that correct? He did, yes. Okay. And if we can go to 5B. Okay. Did, did Detective Schrader have a, a name that he uh, identified this computer to? Uh, yes, this is device 3, Dell Inspiron. Did he further identify it in his report? Um, he has a series Direction of... calls for hearsay. Oh, no. um, can you scroll down on the image just a bit and I'll show? So this, this is the, identi the full identifier um, of this device in uh, Detective Schrader's uh, information provided to us. Um, so this series of numbers, his name, um, I'm not sure exactly what the numbers mean beyond that. And then, as I said, device three, Dalton Sprawn, device three, that's the device three, this is the image name. Did Detective Schrader go into the actual computer itself and then 
retrieve the name that the computer gave itself, or somebody gave the computer. I'm not sure if he did that or not. Okay. So we're looking, uh, we're going to go to 5B, which you were going to tell us what the number on the back of that was? Uh, sure. That is 1037. Okay. Five B. Five B. And five B has multiple pages, correct? Yes. Okay. And what are we looking at? Uh, is that the correct uh, exhibit? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a photograph uh, taken on October twenty eighth, two thousand nine, um, and uh, this photograph was found on the HP Media Center. Um, if you can scroll down, uh, we'll see what the photo is of. Uh, it's a photograph of Joseph McStay uh, using a laptop that appears to be very similar to what we just looked at. And then if we go to the next page? Uh, yes, please. And what are we looking at here? This is another photograph. This one was taken January 15, 2010. Um, and uh, same, uh, same location, this was found on the HP Media Center. Maybe you can scroll down, please. Um, this is a photograph of Summer uh, using what, again, appears to be uh, the same laptop. Okay. And if we go to the next page. Um, okay. Uh, or do you want to stop? Oh, we'll, we'll stop there. Let me ask you this. You said appears to be. Were you able to determine whether or not the device Summer was using, and I think you dated that uh, uh, January 15, 2010, correct? Uh, that photograph? January, let me pull it out then. That sounds right. January 15, 2010, yes. Okay. Um, were you able to determine whether that was the computer that Detective Schrader took a photo of? Uh, that, in fact, is not the same computer. Okay, and tell us why. Um, because the computer uh, that Detective Schrader uh, had, Device 3, Dell Inspiron, that computer was not used at all after a date in October, I want to say October 25th. Um, both of these photographs showing Joseph and Summer clearly using this laptop are dated after uh, the last activity on this computer. So time-wise, there's no way that that could have been the same computer. So the photograph that we saw in 5D, which is the photograph uh, Detective Schrader uh, took a photograph of, um, is not the same photo that we're looking at in 5B, where we have Joseph and Summer using a laptop. That's correct. That's my expert opinion on this, yes. Okay. Is there any uh, other exhibit that you have Let's say we go to 5C, which on the back will have a number. Uh, yes. 5C is 1038. And what are we looking at here? Um, this page is uh, simply showing the very, very last entries of any usage um, on device number three. Now, this is the analysis that comes from uh, Detective Schrader's, how he identified device three, the same photo we just saw. Is that correct? Uh, this analysis, this is my analysis, but I did observe Detective Schrader's analysis, and he performed similar operations. And his analysis would show the last activity as October 25th, 2009 as well? No objection, that calls for hearsay. Well, who, did you review Your that? Honor, that would also violate Sanchez. He did not testify to the analysis of that device. <coughs> the objection sustained. So did you perform an analysis that, uh, about the usage on device number three? Yes, I did. My question was actually on device three. That's the same device three that De Detective Schrader uh, uh, identified as device three. Is that correct? Correct, in his reports, yes. Okay. So, uh, as far as activity is concerned, 
This was the last activity on October 25th, 2009 for that laptop, is that correct? Correct. There is no activity after December 25th, 2009. Is there anything on this uh, uh, exhibit that you want to point out further other than that this was the last activity? No. Okay. Um, do you want to go, do you want me to go to 5A? Um, uh, could we review the, the last two photos? Sure. And that's going to be, oh, that's going to be exhibit uh, 5B. 5B, which is 107, sorry, 1037. Okay. Uh, scroll down, please. Um, this is a, another photograph taken December 12th, 2009. Um, content created December 12th, 2009. Again, taken from device 5, the AP Media Center. Okay. And it's associated uh, with the photograph? Uh, yes, down below. Okay. And what are we looking at and what's the significance? Uh, this, is a, this is a photograph of what appears to be a living room. Um, and, uh, I mean, it, 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 it has context with the final photograph. Okay. We can scroll down. Okay. Uh, this is a final photograph. Um, Create content created December 13th, 2009, again from Device 5, the HP Media Center. The photograph uh, shows the same, uh, uh, the same room, um, very similar setup, except now there are Christmas decorations. And from the previous date, that was December 12th, correct? Uh, yes, correct. So it's a... Uh... One day difference? Correct. One day difference, December 12th to December 13th. Okay. And how is that important for the laptop issue? Um, because uh, we're dealing with times that are recorded by the camera that was used by this. Um, cameras, like any device, can have incorrect times. Um, so this, is, this provides as evidence that the time in the camera was correct. Uh, we have December 12th. Uh, through to moving to December 13th, uh, showing putting up Christmas decorations that is consistent with the time period. And, the, and, and what you're saying then is by looking at the other two photographs where we have Joseph using a photo of him using a laptop on October 28, 2009, and then Summer using a laptop on January 15, 2010, those would be accurate with this uh, camera device based on the the next two photographs, is that correct? That's correct. I, I did analyze, there's data within the photographs it, itself which confirms that they're taken by the same camera. Okay. And so, since the, the usage of October 25th, 2009 was the last time uh, uh, device 3 was used, that the devices that we see in the, the two photographs of Joseph and Summer would have to be another uh, Dell laptop, is that correct? I, I would say that it's extremely compelling evidence that there's another laptop. Now, is there something else that you were able to uh, look at to see evidence of another uh, laptop that was in use? Yes, I, I did. I looked at uh, network information and I found uh, logs on the computer that evidence another laptop. So if you could take a look at a 5A and then look on the back and, and uh, tell us what exhibit number that is. 5A is 1036. Okay. And what are we looking at here? Um, this is um, log information. So again, we've been talking about logs. Logs are computer records that just show that at some date something happened. Um, in this particular case, these are logs from device 4, which is the e-machine. Um, going down this path, there's a lot of information here. What's important is uh, these are McAfee logs. Um, McAfee, uh, you may have heard of, is a popular antivirus and security program that is frequently installed on computers. Is that the type of uh, program that would routinely communicate with other um devices that that user may have? Um, it's a security program, so it is going to monitor activity uh, that's happening on that computer and also monitor network activity to look to see if there's something that's suspicious. 
they might harm the computer. So if we go to the next page of this exhibit, if you could describe what we're looking at, and maybe we can blow it up a little. Yes. Um, so uh, there's, there's a couple of key points to this. The data itself um, is uh, very technicalese, um, but uh, the key point here is we're looking at information recorded as details info. So in terms of logs, we're talking about timestamps and then something happened. In this case, the something happened is details info. And what we see here is uh, something named Giuseppe Lap. Um, so C data, a computer at Giuseppe Lap has attempted an unsolicited connection. Um, unless you want me to, I, I don't actually think it's important to go over every last bit of here. Correct. The important thing to me is that this is identifying a computer, Giuseppe Lap. And then is there a date associated when this event occurred? Yes, it's over on the right hand side. So this particular instance is January 22nd, 2010. Uh, there are many such entries on the left. Uh, the entries on the left are, uh, I believe, all identical or almost identical. Okay. And then are the dates the same on the right? Uh, no, there are different dates. Okay, so th there's events that you were able to see uh, where Giuseppe Lab is identified on different dates, is that correct? That's right. So if we go down, we see January 25th, 26th, and 27th as well? That's right. Um, and that's on 2010? Uh, yes. Okay. If we go to the next page. Uh, the same thing for January 28th, uh, sorry, yes, January 28th, 2010, January 31st, uh, January 31st, February 3rd, and then finally February 3rd. So there's an event that happened on February 3rd at 12.26 uh, p.m., correct? Yes. And can you tell whether that's a user-initiated event? Um, this is not a user-initiated event, almost for certain. This is uh, two computers in the mixed-day home speaking to each other. It's, uh, computers do have a tendency to talk to each other um, on your network. It's not always specifically a user doing it. They, they sort of talk to each other about various things on their own. Okay, so can you, can you say, based, based on what you're seeing here, your opinion is that this uh, Giuseppe Lapp was in existence at the mixed-day home on February 3rd, 2010? At 12.26 p.m.? The computer was in existence and powered on on each of these dates. Uh, the date you just listed being one of them, yes. Based on your uh, review of the evidence, were you able to determine how often or how much uh, Giuseppe Lapp the device that we see here was used in, let's say, the end of 2009, beginning of 2010. Um, I was able to see various network, uh, various logs. This is one example of it um, that indicate that there was usage of Giuseppe Lab uh, throughout the period of 2009. Um, most of the dates that I that I did see uh, were recent, um, but it's important to note that. Um, these, uh, many of these logs are not necessarily kept for a long period of time, so the dates, the recent dates that we see um, are going to be more prominent. Now, the last thing that we see here is the February 3rd, 2010. Did you see any date associating with Giuseppe Lapp on any device after February 3rd, 2010? No, February 3rd was the last date that I saw Giuseppe Lapp. So, but the other devices, we looked at um, the, uh, the HP Media Center and the e-machine. There was, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of, but there was definitely activity, non-user activity after February 4th. Do you recall that? Yes. Virus scans and, and various types of security checks and whatever. Um, so if a computer is existing and it's, and it's in working order somewhere, is it typical that you'll see this non-user activity occur even if it's not in use by any individual? Computers will generally do things on their own, yes. 
the fact that you, we don't see any reference to Giuseppe Lapp after February 3rd, do you have an opinion as to what may have happened to Giuseppe Lapp? Um, from, from the evidence here, I, I simply know that Giuseppe Lapp did not communicate um, with, these net, with this network, at least not in a fashion like this that I could see after February 3rd. That's the last communication that I see. Okay. Um, Your Honor, if, before we go into the next section, is it okay if we take our afternoon recess? Sure. Okay, thank we'll you. We'll go ahead and take our afternoon recess. It's time 15 minutes. Keep in mind uh, the admonition previous we're giving to you, is not the form or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case, and we'll see everyone back in about 15 minutes.